Hey guys, in this tutorial, we're gonna take a look at how to create a universal lower thirds template that we can easily reuse for any project. It's great for quick turnaround projects, but also adaptable for many different looks. It can even be used as a title card. It's gonna be a motion graphics template that we build from scratch in After Effects, but then we can customize it and render it in Premiere Pro for any future projects. All right guys, so our goal is to have a universal lower thirds template that we can easily reuse for any project. And I kind of had four guidelines in place when I went about creating this. And the first is it needs to be simple to create in After Effects, even for beginners. Next, it needs to be simple to use in Premiere Pro because if it's not simple, let's face it, we're probably not gonna use it. It needs to be adaptable, so it needs to have some level of customization. And finally, it has to render fast in Premiere Pro. And if you've never created a motion graphics template before, or maybe if you've never even used After Effects before, no worries, because we're gonna walk through this step by step. And if you just wanna skip to using the lower third template, you can download the one that I created for free from the blog post on premiumbeat.com, so check for that link in the description. All right guys, let's jump over to After Effects and create the template. Let's start by creating a new composition. I'll just go ahead and name this lower third. And we want the size of this to be 840 by 120. I'm gonna have mine be 24 frames per second, so you can set that to be whatever frame rate you typically use, and I'm gonna have it be eight seconds long. Go ahead and click OK. And the first thing we're gonna do is create the background bar, so I'm just gonna right click here and go to New Solid. And I'll just have this be a white solid. I'm just gonna name this BG for background. Make sure it's comp size, and go ahead and click OK. Now I want this to actually animate in, and I'm gonna have it slide in from the side. If you want it to slide in from a different direction, feel free to do that. So I'm just gonna select my background here, I'm gonna hit P on the keyboard for position, and I'm gonna come out here to be about one second. Let's go ahead and create a keyframe there, and let's move this back over to the very beginning. And I'm gonna grab the background, hold shift, and just slide this over so it's completely off the screen. And now we can see we've created an animation of that sliding in. Now I want this to be a little smoother, so I'm gonna select this last keyframe and hit F9. That's gonna make that an easy ease keyframe. And with it still selected, I'm gonna click on the graph editor right here and we can see we have this curve. Let's just grab this last point and pull it all the way over. And when we let go of that and look at this, it'll create a nice smooth animation. Go ahead and RAM preview this. So it kind of comes in and ends smoothly. Now we also wanna go ahead and animate this back out. I'm gonna have it start about six seconds. So what I wanna do here is I'm gonna create a keyframe right there at six seconds when it's on the screen. Let's go ahead and select our first keyframe. I'm gonna hit Control C. Command C if you're on a Mac. And let's move over here to seven seconds and just do Control V to paste that, or Command V to paste on a Mac. And now we can see we've just pasted back in that beginning point, so now we have a nice animating out. And just to make sure this is easing out the same way, I'm gonna select that first keyframe here when it starts to ease out. Go back over to the graph editor. And we just wanna pull this handle all the way over again. So now you can kinda of see we have a reversal there, but we had in the beginning. So it should animate out exactly the same way. Finally, the last thing we need to do on the background, with it selected, I'm gonna hit S for scale, and we wanna go ahead and unlink the scale. See a little chain link there? Go ahead and click that, and that's gonna come into play a little bit later on when we're using the motion graphics template. But now let's go ahead and add in our text. So I'm gonna select the text tool, and I'm just gonna type in title text here, and let's go ahead and take our text, and I'm gonna have it set to be the center for the paragraph setting there, you can see. You have different options there and you can use whichever works for you, but I prefer to have these centered and I'll show you that as well. And then I have the align window open. If you don't see that, it's up here under window. You can select align. And with my text selected, I'm just going to center align this in the composition. Now we want this background bar when it slides in to actually reveal our text. Cause you can actually see right now, if I turn on transparency, our text is already here. So in order for this to work, we need to select our background and we need to duplicate it. So I'm gonna do control D to duplicate that Command D on a Mac. Let's go ahead and move this above our text. And I'm gonna hit enter on that. I'm gonna rename that. I'm just gonna call it Text Mat. Now we can select our text. And we wanna set the track mat for the text here. If you don't see this, go ahead and hit F4 on your keyboard and that will kind of toggle the different switches there in After Effects. But for the title text here under track mat, we wanna select Alpha Mat. So now if we look at this, it's actually going to be revealed now by that background when it slides in. And we wanna adjust one more setting here on our text mat. Go ahead and hit S with it selected to bring up the scale. 
And you can see with our original background here, I have the scale revealed for that as well. If you don't see that, just hit S on the keyboard. So we wanna see the scale for both of these. And then we're gonna come over here to the parent and link. And I'm gonna select this little pick whip, they call it here. I'm just gonna drag it down to the scale of the original background layer. And what that's done is it just links those two together. So if we adjust the settings here for the original background, it will do the same thing for our text mat background. Now we need to create one more mat for our background. This is super simple to do. Let's go ahead and just right click here. Let's do a new solid. We'll just call this BG mat. Make sure it's comp size. And just so we can see this a little differently, I'm gonna change the color of this to red, but we actually won't see this color. It's just gonna help us when we're setting this up. I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And we wanna move this BG mat right above our background layer here. And now we wanna select our background. And over here for the track mat for that, we wanna also set that to be alpha mat. And then the last thing we wanna do on that BG mat layer is select it then hit S on the keyboard to bring up the scale again. And just go ahead and unlink it as well with that little chain link icon, just so those two properties are no longer linked. This way we can scale it on the side and the top at different percentages. We wanna adjust this later. Finally, the last bit of setup we need to do is we need to add a fill effect to the text and to the background so we can change the colors with our motion graphics template. So I'm gonna select my text layer here, come up here to effect, and come down here to generate and select fill. And that's gonna default fill it with a red color. So I'm just gonna change this back to black. I'll see that same thing on our background layer. So select it, come up here to effect, generate and fill. And let's go ahead and change this back to white. Now we've done all the steps to kind of build the background of our lower thirds template. So now let's add the actual settings we want to adjust in Premiere Pro. And we're gonna do that with the Essential Graphics panel. So just come up here to Window. We're gonna open up the Essential Graphics panel right there. And the first thing we need to do is select the composition we wanna start with, and that's gonna be our lower third template. So I'll just select that, it says lower third. Now let's go ahead and give this a name. And I'm just gonna title this Universal Lower Third. And I like to put an underscore at the very beginning of mine, but that's totally optional. That's just so it appears at the very top when we look at this in Premiere Pro in the Essential Graphics panel. Now let's go ahead and create a thumbnail for our lower third. So I'm just gonna drag this out here to kind of where everything is on the screen. And just select set poster time. And that will kind of create a thumbnail for us that we're gonna see in Premiere Pro. And now we can kind of build out our settings. And the first thing I wanna have appear here is just something that says text settings. So we know that's where those are being adjusted. And if you just come down here to the bottom, you can see add a comment. So I'm gonna select that. And for this comment, let's go ahead and title this text settings. And now if we come over here, we can see all the properties that we can add to this panel and customize if we just click this solo supported properties. So when I click that, you'll see it opens up all of these different options for us down here that we can actually drag and drop into that essential graphics panel. And because we're working with the text settings first, we're gonna start with our title text. So you can see that there. And the first thing we wanna drag up here is this setting that says source text. So just grab it and drag and drop it here into the essential graphics panel. And we can rename what this setting is. I'll just call it text. And then we can customize the text here if we want to. I'm gonna leave it as is for now. But come over here to edit properties. And we wanna go ahead and check on all three of these for font properties here. This is just so we can customize it a little bit more in Premiere Pro then go ahead and click OK. You can see we get all those customized options that popped up here as well. The next option we wanna add up here is the text position. So I'm gonna scroll down here and under transform here for our text, we're gonna grab that position and just drag and drop that in. We can just leave that named as the default for position. And then finally, we wanna add in that color here. You can see the effect under fill. We wanna select that color and drag that in as well. This will allow us to change the color of our text in Premiere Pro. Now let's go ahead and start adding our box settings. And before we do that, I'm gonna add a comment here and I'll just call this box settings. And now I'll start dragging and dropping in some of the box settings we have. So for our background layer, the bottom layer here, first setting I wanna add is the color. So we have the fill effect. Let's just drag and drop that in. Next, under the transform settings, I wanna select opacity. I'm just gonna drag and drop that in. And this will allow us to actually adjust the opacity of our background. You can see, go ahead and toggle off transparency there. We can do all of this from inside of Premiere Pro. Next, we wanna select the scale here, just drag and drop that in. And then finally, the last setting we wanna add in here is actually on our background mat layer. So we have the scale option there. We wanna select the scale for that one and drag and drop it in. And I'm just gonna rename this one just so I don't get confused because we have two different scales here. I'm just gonna call this our box clip. And let me just show you guys why we're actually adding this to our motion graphics template. 
So if I select the scale here, if I make it a little smaller, let's say I didn't want the box to be quite as wide, you can see now when this animates in, instead of it starting right here where the box is, it actually comes in here all the way over from the side of the composition. So if we just set this box clip to the same value as our scale, so you can see 74 and 100. So I just type in 74 here. It's going to clip that on the side. So now it's animating in right from that starting position. It'll actually be a little bit smoother when it finishes the ending of the animation as well. So that just gives us that option. I'm gonna set these back to be 100 for each of these, but it's a nice option that we'll have in Premiere Pro when we export this. And now I think we actually are ready to export it. So you can see we have the export motion graphics template. Let's go ahead and click that. It's gonna ask us to save our project. Go ahead and hit save. And then it's gonna ask us where we wanna actually save out this motion graphics template to. I typically do this on the local drive. So I already have a folder selected here. I'll go ahead and click browse. I've got a folder set up. I'll just save it inside of that. Go ahead and click save. But you also have the option to save this right to your library or your local templates folder uh, for Premiere Pro. And there's a couple other options here where it can warn you for different things. I have this first one checked off because it has to do with Adobe fonts. The font I am using is from Adobe fonts. So if you have that installed, you should be just fine. But if you don't, you also have the option to switch that later to any fonts you want. So let's go ahead and click OK. And now that's finished and it's already exported out our motion graphics template. So now if I open up that folder where that exported to, you can see we do have the template. Now that we've exported our motion graphics template from After Effects, let's jump over to Premiere Pro now and start using it. Inside of Premiere, I've got some footage here I'm working with where I wanna add a lower third to. The first thing we need to do is open up the Essential Graphics panel. So I'm just come here to Window and we're gonna select Essential Graphics. And that's gonna open up this panel over here. And you can see a lot of the preset templates that are already in here. But let's go ahead and load in the one we just created. And to do that, we go up here to these three little lines here. I'm gonna click on that. And I'm gonna select Manage Additional Folders. And it's gonna allow me to add a folder. We just wanna add the folder where our motion graphics template is. Go ahead and click Add. And I'll go ahead and select my folder. Go ahead and select Folder. And click OK. And now in here, we can actually see our universal lower third has been loaded into the Essential Graphics panel. And you can see we have that same thumbnail that we set in After Effects. I'm just gonna drag this over a little bit resize some of these panels here. Let's go ahead and add in our lower third. So I'm just gonna drag and drop this in to my timeline, just like it's a piece of footage. Now, depending on how you have your settings for Premiere, will kind of depend on how this looks initially. So the way I have Premiere set up right now is any footage I drag into my timeline, it automatically stretches it so it fits the entire width of the sequence I'm working with. And in our case here, we can see this is way too big. So I actually select our lower third here, just as I would any other video clip. I can come up here to the effects controls and you can see on the scale option here, it's way above 100%. So we actually wanna set this to be on 100%. And that's gonna resize that back down to the original size, that 840 by 120 pixels. So let's go ahead and move this kind of into place here for our lower third. So I'm just gonna move this over with the position setting here in the effects controls. And let's look at some of the edit options we have over here in essential graphics. So we have our text settings, we have text. So I'll just change this to be my name. And then you can see we have other options to change the font, to anything else we want to, adjust the text size if we want to as well. And what I like about the position settings here, depending on whatever you have this say, you can easily kind of recenter that. And then we can change the text color. So I'm actually gonna change this to be more of a premium beat color tone. So I'm gonna set the text to be white. And then for the box settings here, I'm gonna click on that one. And I'm just gonna make this one of the premium beat colors. And go ahead and click OK. Now, one thing I don't like is how the box kind of sticks out here at the edges. I kind of want it to be more formed around the text. So to do that, we just come over here to scale. I'm just gonna scale this in a little bit so it fits nicer around the text. And when I do that, if we actually come back over here to the beginning and we see how this animates on, it's like I talked about before. If we don't do the box clip, it'll actually animate in a little bit farther over. And that may be a stylistic choice you want to have. But for me, I actually want it to animate in right here from the beginning. So all I need to do with this is just set it as the same value as the scale. So the scale is at 82, so I'm gonna set the box clip here to be 82. Now we go ahead and play this back to preview it. And you can see how quick and easy that plays back, just like it's in real time. And again, that's kind of the big part of this process is making sure this renders very quickly. Well, let's add in even more here to our lower thirds. Let's say I wanted to have this say After Effects Artist underneath my name. And to do that, it's really simple as well. We'll just come back over here to the Central Graphics panel. Let's go ahead and add in another copy of our Universal Lower Thirds. I'm actually gonna have this be below our first one, I'll just move that in there. And with it selected again, it's 
scaled it up, so I'm gonna have this be 100%. Let's go ahead and change the text on this one first. I should have to say After Effects Artist. Now, obviously, I don't want the text to be that big, so let's scale it down. I'm just gonna reposition this in the center. And then let's also rescale the box size. I'll bring this in on the sides. And after I do the scale, I'm also gonna wanna set that box clip to be the same, so 50 and 50 in this particular case. So let's come back over here to the effects controls and reposition that secondary title. I'm just gonna move this over. And I'm gonna have it be a little bit offset, kind of staggered there, and we can see how this animates in now. Something else we can do is actually offset the timing of that secondary title, so I'm just gonna move it over just a little bit. And now when we play this back, we get the titles offsetting a little bit, so it looks pretty nice. So let's say we showed this to our client and they like the colors we got going on, but they don't like the box background. So let's take a look at how quickly we can change this up just right here in Premiere. So I'm gonna select my secondary text here for the After Effects artist. Let's say I wanna have that be the premium beat color now. So I'll just come over here and select the text color. And I'm just gonna pick that off of that background for our original title. Let's go ahead and select the box opacity here. Let's turn that all the way down. Let's come up here to my main lower thirds where my name is, and we'll just leave that at white. Let's go ahead and just turn the box opacity for that all the way off. So now you can see we have a totally different look here for our lower thirds. I'll play this back, all from the same template. And finally with this, we can see my clip here actually isn't as long as our lower thirds. So these actually animate out a lot later than the clip actually ends. And an easy way we can fix this so they animate out is just using the razor tool. So I can select that here, just hit C on the keyboard for the shortcut. And I'm just gonna clip both of these. And then we know these animate out at about one second when this ends. So I'm gonna come back over here. What I'm gonna do is just use the razor tool to cut both of those again there. Let's just delete the center part here. And then I'm gonna select both of these and just drag them over. So now they connect. So now they should animate in and then animate right back out. And something else I could do just to kind of be creative here with this at the ending, let's say I didn't want them to stagger out at the end, I'll just drag this one over so they're both lined up and just pull that back over. And now they offset animate in because then they both animate out together. So again, this is a nice simple template that you can use for lower thirds, location reveals, custom titles, or even for easy list animations rendered entirely in Premiere Pro. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. Give us a thumbs up if you did. I'm Charles, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.